Hi friends, welcome to today's video. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can group your data in R. Grouping of data is such an important functionality in data cleaning that you would need to do almost all the time, whether it is when you are preparing your data for data visualization or when you are preparing your data for uh, modeling. And if you have grouped your data before in SQL, you know how it works, what it means. So today we are going to see how we can do the exact same thing inside of R by using two different ways. And I'm going to show you both the ways. So first, let's go ahead and read this data that I have. I downloaded it just from the internet. So let's read this data. Uh, and I use the read.csv function to do it because it is a CSV file. And this data contains over 300,000 rows and 24 columns. So let's see what is inside it. Uh, so this is property data, as the name says, so which is real estate property. So it contains the ID of the property name, what is the number of the house number of the property, where it is located, the address of it, um, the city, the state, the zip code. And then it has the sale price, sale description. So it's all about property. It's property data. And I'm going to uh, upload this into GitHub and I'll um, leave, leave the link of it so that you can download it and you can access it if you want to. Um, so let's see. Uh, so, so first I want to group this data uh, using the aggregate function. So let me first explain what I want to do. Uh, so I want to group using this property city and I want to know what is the mean price. I want to know what is the mean price based on each property city. So how do I do that using the aggregate function? So that is the first function we'll look at. So to do that, first type aggregate and then pass on the argument. So the first argument will be the field that I that we want to be aggregated that we want to be grouped. So in our case, it is the price field, right? We saw that. And then the next argument is this tilde. Uh, and then we will pass on the field based on which the aggregation needs to happen. And in our case, it is the property city. So I'm going to go ahead and type property city. So I want to know what is the price by property city, but I just don't want to know just the, I want to know the mean price. So the next argument I want to pass on is the data set name because it needs to know where this price and property city column is coming from, right? So I, I pass on the name of my data set and then I tell mean, which means now the aggregate function understand understands that it needs to go to property data. From there, it needs to pick up these two columns, property, city, and price. Then it needs to calculate the mean price based on the property city. So then the aggregate function knows what it needs to do. And now I'm go going to go ahead and run this. So let's see what we got. So now we got two columns here. So we have 24 variables, but we extracted two columns, the property city and the price. And now for each unique property city name, it is giving me the mean price of it. Now, if you look closely, some of this, some of these uh, uh, property city names are actually the same property city, but because of some junk data, it comes up as two or more different rows. And one example is this Bradford Woods. So it's obviously both these property cities are the same, right? So before you do aggregation, it is important that you clean your data so that the aggregation happens correctly. And in this case, there should only be one row, right? So if you remove this or if in row number 13, you add it, like I don't know what is the correct uh, name of this place. Uh, based on whatever is the correct name, if when you correct it, when you do some data cleaning beforehand, then you apply the aggregate function, then you should get the correct mean. Um, and, you know, you can see some similar errors over here as well. It is considering both these McDonald's as separate uh, cities. So that's something, you know, you should do before you uh, apply aggregate. 
But if we look at unique names, uh, for example, we have Bakerstown, right? We have Brackenridge. So all these places have their mean price now on this second column. Okay, so what if I want to uh, aggregate based on two columns? So instead of property city only, what if I want to have one more column, right? So how do I do that? So it's very easy. So I'm going to copy paste the exact same thing once again. So now what you have to do, you have to do a plus sign and give the name of the second field, which you uh, want to add to your uh, aggregation. So let's go and see which field we want to use. Um, so let's use property zip. So now my price will be aggregated based on property city and property zip. So I'll get the mean price by property city and property zip. So let's run this and see what we get. Okay, so now we have three different columns, right? Previously, we just had property city and price. Now we also have property zip. And every um, city is now broken down by zip. And uh, it's very clearly visible in case of this Pittsburgh, right? So we have Pittsburgh, then we have Pittsburgh broken down by all the unique zip codes. And then finally, we have the mean price for each zip code in Pittsburgh property city, right? So that's how you can aggregate your data based on two different columns or more. You know, you just keep on going. You can add another plus sign. You can keep on adding as many columns as you want and you can, uh, you know, group your data. And if you want to have multiple uh, fields that you want to uh, have over here, you know, that you group, then you have to do a C bind and you have to give the other uh, field over here. You know, I'm just saying X, whatever it is, you know, you pick it up from your data set. So just to remember, if you want to have multiple columns on left hand side, then you use C bind. And if you want to have multiple columns on the right side, then you just use plus. Okay, so that's how you can use the aggregate function to group your data. And next we are going to try and use another uh, different way. Uh, and for that first I'm loading the dplyr function because that's another, uh, sorry, the dplyr library because the dplyr library has a number of functions which we can also use to group our data. And I'm going to try and replicate the results of these two. So first step you need to do here is to, um, okay, let me first say, we are going to use group underscore by, and we are going to use the pipe operator. So that's how we will do the group. So first you need to say the name of your data set. In our case, it is property data. So I'll say property data, and then I will give this pipe operator. If I've never seen this before, then this is a percentage sign, then a greater than sign, and then a percentage sign. So what it allows us to do multiple functions, one after another, uh, in the same statement, right? So you don't have to do different statements. So first I tell that, okay, I want to work with my property data. Next, I'm going to say, select the two rows, uh, sorry, the two columns. In my case, it is property city and price. Those are the two columns on which I want to do my uh, group by. So I'm going to say property city and I'm going to say price. So what this will do, it will extract only the two columns from this data. So I can even run these, these two lines of code and you can see that from the 24 columns, now it, it has extracted the two columns over here. Now I want to do one more step on this and I'm going to say group by the field that I want to use for grouping and that is property city, right? So I'll say property city and then I will once again give the pipe operator and then finally I'll say summarize and I'll say 
mean price, and I'm just going to say na dot rm equals to true, just so to exclude all any of these na fields if there are any. Whenever we are using this mean function, okay. So many things happening here, right? So I'll explain once again. So we'll first use the data set name. Then we are saying select property city and price from property data. Then we are saying group it by property city and then give me the mean price of property city. I would say this is a little similar to our uh, SQL uh, code, isn't it? Um, and I can do this in multiple statements, but by using the pipe operator, I can do them all together at once. So let's run this and let's see what we get. OK, so now I have each of these uh, fields. I think we saw them last time and in the second column we have the means. OK, so I'll show you later on uh, the results of uh, this and this like the aggregate and the group by side by side so you can see how similar or different they are but let me now show you the second thing that doing the group by with multiple columns like here we had property zip so what if I want to do the same here so I'll only give a comma inside group by and I'll say property zip so and if I run this now oh sorry I need to extract this also here because I've selected only two of the columns, right? So I now, now I need to select a property zip also. So now if I run this, okay, so now I have the city name, the property zip code and the mean price, right? And if I want to give my mean price a different column name, so I can do that. By saying here, inside summarize, I can say mean underscore price equals to this. Because if you see here, you know, it says some mean price and I, I don't want my column name to be that. So if I do this now, you can see that it says property city, property zip and mean underscore price. So now this is a new column. OK, so let's do one thing. Let's try to run these one, one after another and compare the results and see if we are getting the correct uh, means or not. So, so Allison Park, we have 188.492. Okay, this one, you know, first row, it just empty space. So ignore this one, you know, you, you, this should be removed when you're cleaning your data. So we'll start from here. So Allison Park, 188.492. So let's see what happens if we run this. Uh, so you can see Allison Park is 88,492, right? It's matching what it is here. So we are getting actually correct results. And the next one for Ambridge, if we see it's 60320 and it's kind of 60319. So this the next one is actually just rounded up, right? So it's giving us the exact same results. And if we try that with this one, so this is the first one using aggregate and this is the second one using group by. So let's see. So Allison Park um, is it just has one zip code. So the value still is the same. But let's see what we see here. Uh, some reason Allison Park is not showing up, but let me see for something else. Ambridge. OK, so for Ambridge we have so this one is 6319.761. Um, so you can see it's is the same thing is just rounded up. So if you can uh, check when if you run this and if you can find out why uh, the first column is not showing up, let me know. Uh, and if I found found it out later on, I will uh, put it out, put it out. But you know, I don't want to make this video too long by really analyzing what is going wrong. But as you can see, these are two different ways to group your data. And you can move this data to a data frame also. I can just give some data frame D. And if I do that, you can see I have now a data set D and you can directly you know, get that data into a data frame, right? 
same you can do here as well. I can directly pass this into a data frame. Right? So, but you see the, how the column name over here is. So that's why we need to kind of, if we give a proper column name, it's more easier for us to interpret the data. So if I do that, see, now I have property city, property zip and main price, right? So that's how guys that you can uh, group by your data and you can, um, then further use it once it is grouped you can then take uh, let's say you can take this data frame now and use it you know for visualization for any other analysis it just helps you to clean your data but remember before you group by make sure to clean your data properly so that you can avoid any junk data and anything like that uh, uh, otherwise you know you will get incorrect data like i can already see there is some incorrect data over here um, you know, we have two sep uh, you know, separate zip codes and something is going on. So make sure you clean your data. This is just data directly from the internet that I'm using as is. And so there are some errors, but if you work with it, um, you know, just if you want to just learn it, uh, you know, these are these are the two functions that you can learn to do your group by. So guys, if you like this video, then give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to our channel. Okay, thank you so much. Bye.